Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, people. Hell of a fight. Hell of a fight. Quick post-fight toss to Fabio Wadley versus Nathan Gorman. Now, going into this fight, I picked Fabio Wadley to win this fight, but I thought he'd win it either on points or late stoppage. But I did think going into this fight, there was the chance that it could catch fire. But I actually kind of thought it would be a bit cagey at the start, and it might catch fire later on. Well, this fight caught fire pretty much from the second round. You know, the first round was good. The first round was a good round. It was a really good round for Nathan Gorman. You know, you saw the better schooling of Nathan Gorman in the first round because he was able to find a home for the jab and find a range for the jab very early on. He was also able to find a home for the uppercut. And I think it was the uppercut that gave Fabio Wadley a lot of damage around the nose. His nose was bleeding quite bad. It might have actually been broken or it was maybe cut just on the top of it. But he was able to smash up Wadley's nose a bit and then I started bleeding the second round more so. But he had a very good first round and I thought, okay, Nathan Gorman... Although, you know, the, not the body beautiful, he never has been, but he really didn't look good aesthetically in this fight. You know, the fat was coming over the fell, um, the fell protector, you know, which is never a good look, but he still maintained a, a decent amount of hand speed. You could tell that he had the advantage in hand speed there because his hands were actually quite good. Fabio Wadley, whose jab has a good jab of his own, didn't really find it in the first round. Now we go into the second round, and this is when it all kicked off. It looked to me as though, well, Fabio Wardley was a, sorry, not Fabio Wardley, Nathan Gorman. He was looking to counter with left hooks. And he was able to land a little left hook the midway point of the second round, which I think stung Fabio Wardley. But maybe he was not as hurt as Nathan Gorman thought, because now the commentators were kind of getting a bit kind of animated, saying, oh, has he buzzed uh, Fabio Wardley? Well, he didn't. And Wadley was able to get Nathan Gorman up against the ropes, was able to sneak a right hand just through the guard, landed on the tip of the chin, and down went Nathan Gorman. Now, when he got back up, he didn't look out of it. His legs didn't look like they were gone completely. But Fabio Wadley, being a finisher, went straight for the jugular. And actually, there was a few times there when he was actually looking to finish Nathan Gorman in the second round. He came very close to taking some big left hooks. There was times where I was thinking... Okay, like he, Wadley is, um, he's he's putting himself in there now. He's at danger. He's in danger there. But he was able to, whatever Nathan Gorman was throwing back at him, he was able to come through it. And he was able to drop Nathan Gorman again. I get, I, I guess realistically, he probably never recovered from the first knockdown because the way he went down from the second one, it was kind of a punch that just sort of grazed the top of Nathan Gorman's head, and he went down from that. And I guess. From that, Nathan Gorman never really recovered. Or maybe he never really recovered from the first one. Because he went back to the corner. Did a great job to survive the round. Because that happened with about 20 seconds to go in the second round. And I was really looking at that thinking, will he actually get through this round? Is he even going to be able to make it to the end? Now, he did. It came out in the third round. And he didn't come out too bad, truth be told, in the third round. He actually came out okay. He looked to have weathered the storm. And also... Fabio Wadley is someone who's never gone past six rounds. So he was putting in a great deal of effort in that second round, trying to get rid of Nathan Gorman. So I was looking at that thinking, okay, Nathan Gorman's come out here in the third round, and he's not. he looks like his legs are more together than they were at the end of the second round. And at the end of the day, Fabio Wadley is not used to fighting at this pace because Nathan Gorman had him fighting at a pace that he really wasn't used to. So I was thinking, okay, this is a 12-rounder. You know, he is never going to be able to maintain that pace for 12 rounds, especially when he's not used. The most ever gone is six rounds. So how will he look in three or four rounds' time if Nathan Gorman is still there? He's not going to be able to maintain that pace. Now, didn't make a bit of difference because ended up dropping Nathan Gorman again. Another right hand went in. And again, Nathan Gorman took his time before getting up. He didn't look massively out of it, but, you know, referee let it go on. You know, he wasn't, you know, again, he wasn't massively out of it. Referee let it go on, lasted for a little bit longer, and the corner threw the towel in. Now, that kind of surprised me. I'm going to say it kind of surprised me when they threw the towel in. I was thinking, stopped a bit early maybe, but at the end of the day, we don't know what's been going on in the corner. Maybe Nathan Gorman, maybe they knew he was more hurt or you know something like that, because it did just kind of seem a bit random. But at the end of the day, the power of Fabio Wadley was, was telling. You know, Nathan Gorman hadn't really got an answer for it. And whenever, no matter how much he was trying... Whenever he got clean or even kind of got semi-hit clean, 
he was going down. So you kind of got the impression that another knockdown was inevitable. And probably at that stage, four knockdowns, they probably would have waved it off regardless. Fabio Wadley, you know, Nathan Gorman, he definitely he definitely gave him some problems in there. But Fabio Wadley got the impression wasn't to be denied. You know, he just wanted it more than Nathan Gorman. You could see that in the way he was fighting. He really just wanted to go for the jugular. He wanted to get him out of there. He wanted it more. It was as simple as that. It was as simple as that. And I think Nathan Gorman just... Do I say he resigned? Like, he still tried, but... It wasn't like Eric Molina where he was just looking for a spot on the canvas to lie down. But I think maybe Nathan Gorman knew himself. He's like, look, this ain't my night. As much as I want to try and as much as, as the success I'm having, this is a one. This is going one way. I think he probably knew that as well. So Fabio Wadley moves on. I mean, like, it, the two contrasting careers, we'll say, in boxing. You know, you've won the white collar, you know, which is the unlicensed, not even amateur fights. And if the other who was, you know, the amateur who did it all the normal way, you know, the apprentice then into, you know, the pro game. And, you know, the white collar won. And, and, you know, Fabio Wadley, you know, this is a good win for him. He did it in quicker time than Daniel Dubois did, which is, is true. And, and I think that that Nate, that Nate Gorman was lighter as well. So, you know, he can look at that and say, OK, look, Dubois has a WBA title now. And yeah, I got rid of this guy quicker than he did. So, there you go. You know, I had him down. Think Dubois had him down. Did not think Dubois had him down? Did he only had him down two times? And then Wadley was able to get him down a couple more times than that. So, you know, good win for uh, Fabio Wadley. And a very, very good co-main event. You know, I have to say, Eddie Hearn, he knows put heavyweights on. Heavyweight in the main, heavyweight in the co-main. That's what people want to see. And in fights like this, where it's two guys who are both young, young in their pro careers... You know what happens. You know they, they very seldom you see guys like this go into sparring partner mode, and it's just a case of you know I'll pick up around here, pick up around there. Now with these guys, you knew you kind of know youngish guys like that. You know they're both in their mid twenties. They're both trying to you know prove something. You normally tend to see these things happen. You normally tend to see a catch fire. Just depends how quick. And very good co main three rounds, but it was a fun three rounds. Look forward to the main. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? How far do you see Fabio Wadley going from here? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed the video, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Main event coming up next. We'll talk to you straight after. Peace.